Okay, we're going to talk about uh, forms of lines. We change them to different forms depending on the problem, so you have to be able to convert back and forth from different forms. So first one we're going to talk about is going from point slope to slope intercept form. Remember the point slope form is the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m is the slope and x1, y1 is a point. And we want to change that to the slope intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the intercept. And remember that means that the point zero b is on the graph. This is called the y-intercept because this is where it crosses the y-axis. So when x is zero, y is b. Okay? So this is our point-slope form. So if we're given a point and a slope, it's very easy to write the equation of the line. Now we have to convert this, so the first thing we'll do is um, just remove, we want to get this to slope-intercept form, so we just want it into the y equals form, so we just subtract three from both sides. And that should get the y equals form. So I'll subtract 3 from both sides. More like this. And positive 3 and negative 3 is 0, so we just have y equals on the left, which is nice. And we've got the 3 fifths times x minus 2 minus 3. Now we're almost done except we've got a number here and a number here that we can probably combine if we remove this parenthesis. So we'll use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. 3 fifths times x is just 3 fifths x. And then 3 fifths times 2, well 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1, it's a fraction. So this is like numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, so that's going to be 3 times 2, first of all, my sign is negative. Positive times a negative is a negative. 3 times 2 is 6. And 5 times 1 is 5. Minus 3. Now again, these are all fractions. We, we usually keep these things in, in fractional form. So 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1. I can write that as 3 over 1. So I've got... 3 fifths x, and then I've got a couple of fractions over here, and I would like to combine them, or add them, so to speak, algebraically add them. So we have to have a common denominator in order to add fractions, remember that. So my least common denominator between 5 and 1 is 5, so I need a 5 here. So I'll multiply the top and the bottom by 5, so I can get a 5 in the denominator, okay? Remember, 5 over 5 is 1, and we can multiply anything by 1. We sometimes call this a unit fraction. We use unit fractions a lot. 5 over 5 is 1, so I can multiply anything by 1. So now I have y equals 3 over 5, x. And I have a negative 6 over, well, let me simplify this first. Negative 6 over 5. And minus, and what's 3 times 5? 15 over 5. Okay. And now I can combine these because they're both fifths. This is like negative 6 apples and minus 15 apples. And 15 over 5 is the same thing as 3. We've just written it in a form that we can add that because it has the same denominator as the 6 fifths. But 15 over 3 is the same thing as, I'm sorry, 15 over 5 is the same thing as 3. You can see that. Okay? So now we have y equals, now this stays the same, 3 over 5x, and a negative 6 and a negative 15. All right? You could put an, an intermediate step over here, and you could say this is the same thing as negative 6, negative 15, all over the common denominator 5, if you want and a negative 6 and a negative 15 is a negative 21. Remember when we're combining or adding? We always use the sign of the larger, and if the signs are the same, we use the sum of the numerals. The numeral here is 6 and 15, so the sum of 6 and 15 is 21. So it's going to be negative 21 over 5. 
Oops, sorry, wrong color. And there you go. And we usually leave it like this. You don't have to change it to a, an, a mixed number. You could, that would be the same thing as four and one fifth if you wanted to, but this form is usually acceptable. If you have to graph it, you'd make it four and one fifth so you could find the point. So I hope that makes sense. It should be pretty straightforward.